Happy New Year, bon année. Uh, no, well, it's a little bit late to say all of that because it's now well into the new year. This is the 17th of February and here I am doing the second video of the year. Um, the first video I've just done, so I'll be out at some point. And so I thought I'd do a review of last year, 2022. 2021 wasn't a very good year, so I don't think we'll really bother with that. Um, and largely forget about it, really. So between uh, September and December, I didn't really do a lot of video on this channel, but I did some small short clips on uh, the other channel, which is Mega Brev and Notes. So if you have a look on there, you'll see a few things uh, that I've put up um, you know, during the autumn and into the winter. So yeah, all those are going to be put together and I'm going to introduce you to the review of 2022. Enjoy! <clears throat> well, as you've seen from the title of the video, uh, we've got Covid. Um, so yeah, it's true, uh, we've all got um, Covid at the moment, so I thought I'd do a, a bit of a vlog. Um, but before I do that, I hope you all had, <clears throat> excuse me, going to be a bit of coffee and probably involved here, but I hope you all had um, a wonderful Christmas and New Year's, given the, the situation. Um, obviously, you know, things haven't been so brilliant for us, but we, we started off with a nice Christmas, so that's the main thing. Um, so I'm sitting here in the van, which I haven't touched for a little while, and uh, even the steering wheel is... Uh, dirty got sort of if you can see that it's sort of uh humidity um mold i'd say and as you've seen in the, the last video it's going to be doing the front dash panel which has been dragging on far too long now uh, all the bits are sitting in in my office and waiting to be put together but uh, i'm just i'm just not uh, really in the mood to do um, it um the next thing is to to find some paint because if you look uh, a few videos back, um, I actually repaired, I've gone all dark, some of the, the flooring. Well, some of the flooring was a corner of the floor in the cab. And uh, just going to have a look at that now. The trouble is to do that, I need to go inside to open the other door. Sorry for the darkness, the light is particularly bad today, it's really horrible and dull. That's mostly dry around here. Um, it's going to be fun trying to film this because it's in a strange place in the in the cab. So um, I'll try to, try to show you what I'm going to do in this confined space. So I bought some, some of this paint here um, from a famous uh, online site. And uh, it's, I guess it's modelling paint, it's painting plastic anyway. Um, no particular brand that's well known. It says Model Air Vallejo. So if you can, if you can see that at all. I've just uh, come to the van this afternoon and noticed a little problem. So that's the repair that I did uh, with the slurry. Um, and yesterday I actually painted one coat of grey paint on top and um so i painted that on i don't know it must have been about three o'clock i think yesterday afternoon and it's now about the same um the following day and uh the paint was still wet it didn't even dry didn't do anything oh it's cold today um anyway welcome to this video uh, today's my birthday uh believe it or not Hello folks, um, first video on the DJI Osmo action cam and this is very strange because the screen is very small and uh, while it's light I thought I'd just do a little bit of uh, filming outside so I'm just trying to get used to this thing uh, if I can switch it, switch it over no. It's going to take a bit of getting used to. So there we can see my Nikon D3400, our trusty Grand Scenic, blue skies, 
but it's freezing cold so I'm not going to be staying out here for much longer so I think I'll wrap it up there uh, just to let you know that there's going to be a change of technology there we go I'm back on the uh, on the other screen uh, the change of technology on the channel I'm having to use my my grandfather's old tripod to put this nice modern DJI action camera on uh, so that I can show you what I'm going to be using to replace the tripod um, so I invested in a smart tree um, I guess you call it a selfie stick or I don't know but um, basically um, you can use it like this so it's quite good for close shots and as the st stabilization is quite good on the action camera um, I didn't really want to buy a gimbal so I bought this instead but um, the thing that's quite interesting is that uh, like all selfie sticks you can you can extend it out uh, and then tighten it up and you've got quite a long stick okay you can put the attachment on for the action cam which is the two prong bracket thing with a hole through it or you can put a, a traditional um, as I've got on my tripod camera um, attachment which I, I think is already there actually but um, you've got that and then you've got um, what comes with it is an attachment which is like spring loaded for your, your phone um, I've actually already got an attachment for my phone which is it's got a knob that you turn on the end which I prefer because the spring loaded one is likely to damage your, your phone because it's, it puts too much pressure on the sides as well you get this too so you can turn it into uh, an actual tripod so you screw that into the bottom and these open out and there you've got your tripod so you can stick that down there and there you go you've got a tripod with the quite high selfie stick so going away from the tripod back to the camera again um, at the moment I haven't got one but you can buy an adapter that fits into this um, USB-C uh, plug uh, so that you can use an external mic when you've got this this cage around the camera um you can't actually plug it in when you've got the door if you can see the the door here which i've taken off you've got like a little square thing on there so you need to push that all the way across and once you've done that you can click it into place push the door down and then close it you open the door you press the little button to open the door push it back so you push it back and it should clip out like that and then when you put it back in as before you have to push on this little square thing here and then clip it in which I've just shown you or well, part four of uh, repairing the dash funnel so before Christmas or long before Christmas um, I repaired this part of the hole to make it so it was square again and now the idea is is that we're gonna use some super glue to try to sort of like reinforce it a little bit because with this being plastic putty it has a tendency to not adhere properly to the plastic and it can snap a cheap version of super glue so we'll, we'll give it a try what's more you've got a nice little what looks like um it's a pseudo ds 2 cv on it kind of weird that looks very strange i like it actually i quite like the design of that it's cute so I've still seen opening this one, a um, different way of opening it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick a bit, it's a bit, it seems to be a bit watery compared to the other glue. Um, I'm going to stick a bit sort of, ooh, it is watery, it's going everywhere. Well this is just not very useful is it? 
So the idea is to have some rubber, a strip of rubber down here over these holes, well obviously with the hole in the rubber, and then coming down here, or narrow a little bit here, all the way down to the, the edge of the mud guard. So now we've got the template, um, it doesn't really matter which way around it's going to go, uh, I'm going to do four of these and that's where the, it's basically where the square hole goes in the, the bumper. And there we go. So you can see the hold up to the light. You can see where the holes are going to go. Just need to mark the holes from the this template one, two, the other three, and then I'm going to be using these two to cut out a hole. I think that will be probably it. So that's going to be the next stage, cutting the holes out. So I've just uh, done this by hand without a hammer and put the holes in and I've checked it on the side of the van. Um, I was thinking about gluing these to the actual panel but it's not really going to be a very good idea because you can actually stretch these to, to fit the holes. I think what I'll do is I'll just glue it temporarily in, in, place, in, in, in places where it's not going to move about too much. So we'll leave it at that today and uh, we'll come back and get on with the rest. So I've uh, glued the this down, I've taken the bolts off now because I need to take the front off and, um, later on. And uh, done the other side as well. So the other side is uh, stuck quite well. I think we can agree that's quite heavy, all that, and nothing's falling over. Mind you, we haven't travelled very far, have we?
So today we're not going to be talking about Mega Bread Van because we're here in the Normandy countryside. Now why are we in the Normandy countryside? Because um, it's actually the school holidays at the moment and we're away for a couple of nights and we're staying in a British double decker. Wow. So at the moment we can't go in the cab. Um, it's locked. Um, but there's a reason for that. It's because the bus actually is still in working order. Uh, even though it is um, very much parked up and got a, a little terrace built around it the motor still functions and so obviously we don't really want uh, people wandering around in the cab um, when things still work it's in the original livery uh, that it was sold in I think which was um, city sightseeing but uh, yeah um, everything's all good and it's in a very very nice location here in the Normandy countryside so I think we'll go and have a look aboard so I'll give you a quick tour uh, inside excuse our mess so we're coming by the middle doors because as I've just said the uh, the driver's position is locked away and to be able to get in and close the door because it's a little bit cold today so if we come in here let's put the light on so we can see what we're doing We've got a dartboard and a panel hiding the cab and uh, this is just like a, a sort of storage area I suppose you can you can store your clothes here and in our case we store our luggage and then if we come round we've got a lovely seating area it's really quite good um, we've got flashing um, LED lights under the seats and we've got Bluetooth in the light at the top there got a TV uh, we got a coffee maker and the microwave in the fridge there we go a decent sized fridge and a heater now I'm going to take you upstairs the bear with me so I've got a bit of a bad back and um, getting upstairs is an interesting thing for me <clears throat> all part of getting old I suppose uh, so if we come upstairs so I'll come through to the central bit of the bus then we can see everything a bit easier so here in the central bit you've got a, a charging point uh, a cupboard and, and it, quite a bit of space actually it's quite spacious around here so if we come through here We've got the first of the bedrooms, this is the smaller bed, that's where my daughter's been sleeping. Mademoiselle likes her switch. So I'm just open the, the curtains so we can see out the front a little bit. There we are. So there you see, there's no there's no periscope left. If we look up there. The periscope's not open, the mirror's still there. So all, all the panelling, it's been there to obviously add some insulation, I suppose, and uh, it's mostly like that all around the bus. Uh, Ulrich said to me that because most of it's aluminium inside, there's not really a lot of uh, insulation needed, really. And I think he's right, because... It was a bit toasty last night. We put the, the heaters on. There's one there, there's another one in the other room, and it was fine. Perfectly fine. And a good night's sleep. So, I come through to the master bedroom, so to speak. So, you've got a full size bed at the back. Uh, I'm not going to crawl over the bed to go and open the curtains over there now, but uh, I think you can get the, the idea of the space. It's really very good. So first of all, um, what I'm going to do is I think I'll show you a few uh, bits and pieces that are to do with the camera because uh, the camera I'm using, the DJI Osmo, is something that is quite new to me. I'm still getting used to it, still getting used to 
filming with it because I noticed in my last video um, there was a lot of wobble and I'm not sure why that was. Um, it's okay now on this uh, sort of selfie stick come tripod but uh, I was a bit disappointed because the camera was sort of like shaking about quite a bit. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my phone to film because obviously I'm filming with this. I want to show you a few things on my camera. Um, the setup is a little bit haphazard because um, I'm trying to use my cordless um, microphone here, uh, but um, unfortunately on a DJI Osmo you need to have an adapter which is this square thing you can see on the side here. I'll just film a bit further out so it won't be all blurred. Um, yeah, so unfortunately um, I also found out that you need to have a cable plugged into the adapter for the um, receiver to work. So I sort of worked that out by trial and error really, but obviously um, it's not ideal. So that means I've had to, to Velcro fit um, the receiver onto my selfie stick. Um, that's not ideal either because it keeps moving about, but uh, for the minute it's just temporary. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the setup now. Uh, in fact, it's strange really because if I just lean that up against, up against there, because I wanted to to talk about the mounting that's on here. Um, so this big blue mounting um, was made by my friend Adam. He 3D printed it for me, um, and I'm so grateful because he's been printing out a few things. So a nice DJI Osmo lens cap so that's quite useful because the lens cap didn't come with the the camera but yeah so I made this wonderful fitment so that means that I can have this adapter on the side um, because normally the cage that comes with the camera fits all the way around and hides the USB port it's not drilling very well for some reason it's probably not fast enough Well, I think that's safe to say it's broken. Oh, God. Well, I'll have to do it the wrong way around now. So, well, at least that's going to hold, but it's the wrong way around. Anyway, to fix roughly there, so it's going to be something like that, which means that it's going to be, I think there's room for two holes, one there, one there and possibly in the middle as well and obviously at the other end so hopefully that will be okay so I've marked out the, the places where I'm going to put holes and here if you can see the bracket as I explained to you it's in two halves and if you don't get them straight when you tighten them up and obviously there's a bit of pressure uh, from the from the bottom of this it's heavier with the metal being there so it's a bit difficult to tighten up but uh, it looks a lot better try to get underneath so you can see a bit more with the, the bolts that I've put in and so far it hasn't broken so we will see time will tell yeah it's the right size so I've had a look on uh, online um, to see how to put one of these on because I've never done it before and the fact that this one is uh, some permi wiper so it might be a bit different to the usual standard ones the washer just here and the, the blade is looking a bit a bit bad actually I can't really show you in any great detail what I'm supposed to be doing here but uh, it seems that you just pull it up and it comes off sorry for knocking you so you can see that and sort of law will mean that I probably can't do this right the first time so we're fiddling around with it and it needs to hang on 
He used to go through there. Through there. And there we go. You get that for me, camera person? <laughs> so, let's have a look inside. Ah. I was a little bit worried about this because if you can see, I don't know if I can... It's not completely round. Um, so, yeah, that's an issue. Um, in fact, I created the image, which I'll show you in a minute. Uh, we've seen it already, it's the logo. But uh, I created the image in uh, Photoshop. And I used the the round tool to cut things out. Um, I don't know what you call it in in technical speak. And I've used Photoshop for a long, long time. Um, since, in fact, um, the late 90s. Uh, probably a bit before that. No, I was using Coral Draw before that. Anyway, I digress. So, yeah, there we go. The reveal, the sticker. So if you can put it with a sticker that's a bit wobbly around the edges, you can buy one of these from my Teespring shop. to the Mega Bread Van channel. Uh, we're off to the Gasoline Festival in uh, La Motte uh, Bouvon, uh, which is uh, I think to the south southeast of Orléans. <laughs> The good thing about this park is that it's right next to the, the wetlands and you've also got uh, a view of the rear of the local chateau. And you sort of come in here and you've got loads of places to disappear off to. Like I just said to Emma, um, early in the morning you sometimes see a few deer, but not at this time. Uh, they're, they're probably hiding from us on there. So you've got the village down here and then you've got uh, the park is where my shadowy finger is, it's there. So it shows you actually how big the wetlands are and it's not just that, it, go, it carries on down the river up north towards Cour Bay and then south towards uh, Balancourt, La Ferte Allée, Bury sous Juin, uh, Lots of villages you've probably never heard of, but it basically goes south. So if you're ever in Paris, then you can take the A6 auto route towards Lyon and turn off at a place called Lys uh, and head towards Mency. I'm not sure if it's signposted posted from Mency, but you've got the um, the wetlands that go towards Mency as well. So if you if you go to Lys and then towards Mency, you'll see some wetlands. Uh, if not, you can take the, the train line, which is the RER, RER, D, uh, line D, from Gare de Lyon or Châtelet des Halles in Paris. We're at 37 degrees, folks. So we're down in the basement, which is why we've got these strange, these strange surroundings here you've never seen before. So, yeah, it's lovely and cool down here, and uh, we don't have to have the air conditioning on 
we've got a little portable air conditioning thing upstairs and uh, that costs money uh, so it doesn't cost money down here because we haven't got any any use for an air conditioning unit because it's nice and cool so um, at the moment uh, we're stuck at home nothing else to do so I thought I'd do a video about what I just received from Editions Atlas so it's a bit of an unboxing uh, we have all the gubbins in here, paper and whatever. Uh, Emma's taken that away for me. Thank you, Emma. So what we got here? We have a VOV standard Mercedes O three hundred five. There we are. So far as nothing's fallen off, but uh, although they're really highly detailed and look excellent this is all plastic and the rest underneath you've got a sort of metal chassis so you have to be extremely careful with these because they they break easily but uh, it's a nice looking model well in 1995 I went to visit my friend Dirk um, who was uh, uh, was from Marburg and he was living in Marburg and he was living with his parents at the time and I uh, went to go and stay there, they were lovely, uh, had a great time and uh, we travelled around uh, parts of Germany in his mother's car which was a uh, Mercedes Benz, I don't know which one it was, I'll put it down here um, but uh, we visited uh, Erfurt, Gotha in the former East um, Germany and then we went off to the, towards the West, or towards the, the Ruhr and uh, the industrialised areas, went to Wuppertal, Zollingen, uh, Wuppertal famous for the, um, um, you know, the monorail, um, which we managed to, to ride on, uh, took plenty of photos at the time, uh, Zollingen because they had uh, three axle um, single deck trolley buses, uh, we went to Essen, Darmstadt, um, where else, uh, no we didn't go to Dusseldorf, um, I think that was about it, but uh, it was a wonderful trip. And so on the way back, I took a Eurolines coach going going over from London. But on the way back, we stopped at uh, Cologne, and there was a similar looking Mercedes Benz uh, 0305 in the station, similar colours as well. This one's a Frankfurt bus, by the way. So yeah, happy memories from 1995. And that's really why I buy models. They tend to be little memories. So I think we'll look at the. The sales brochures, first of all, I've got Emma here helping me film, so I can use both my hands. And uh, hopefully her arms won't ache too much after this. But uh, this is the, the brochure for the Phase 2. But it's got a strange body attachment for um, getting rid of garden waste, basically. So you've got all the different uh, versions down here. Okay, so you've got a standard wheelbase. Um, you've got a short wheelbase version as well, but uh, it isn't in this picture. I think it's on the inside. Um, you've got the diesel versions and the electric versions. So this is the, the phase two, which is mine. And this is, for me, this is like gold dust. I mean, it's it's excellent. And I can't, I can't thank Simon and Janet enough for sending me these is one of those and you don't see many of them on the roads because they made I don't know how many of them made but they made, didn't make very, very many of them and then they went out of business
so one of the first chilly mornings if it's going to be 29 degrees later you can see a lot of condensation in here uh, like to clean the mirror and the side window and I put the ventilation on but it's pretty much useless in this van that's something I'm gonna have to address at some point the heating and the ventilation Hello there, I thought I'd give you a quick update on uh, on things in general because I haven't really done many videos as of late. In fact, I don't think I've done one since uh, we came back from holiday with the the video about the wedding. So basically my, my health has been a bit rubbish and uh, just everyday life, uh, work and whatever is getting in the way a little bit uh, as well. Uh, so hopefully a few more videos will be coming your way. Meanwhile, I'm off to go and walk Dolly. We're still up, Dolly. We're still up. Dolly is a bit too eager to go for a walk because she doesn't like being in Mega Bread Van very much. It makes her very nervous. So off we go for our little walk. Let me just get your lead. Hello and welcome to Mega Bread Van Notes. Um, it's a new sort of channel to go along with my um, main channel, which is Mega Bread Van. Uh, now, why did I decide to create a second channel? Um, perhaps it's just going to create more hassle. But um, I thought that it might be good to have an outlet where I can do things that are just simple. Uh, just uh, a simple video. Um, very little editing, if possible. And uh, me just talking uh, about everyday things. And sometimes things to do with with Mega Bread Van, but other things too, like uh, living in France um, and the trials and tribulations of that, which might be of interest to some of you out there. Now, if you go on to Instagram and Tiny Van Forty Nine, you'll see that they've done a, a camper out of a XMD truck, which to me seems a little bit mad. But I got to thinking, I wonder what it'd be like if I put a seat and a table in the back of my van. So I could sit and drink my tea or coffee uh, out in the in the wild, so to speak. So here we go. So first of all, we have to be very careful of there's a little metal thing here that holds the doors to, in, uh, locks the doors in actually. And I always catch my head on that, and that is really painful if you do that. So I have to be careful not to hit my head on that. So I'm generally get into the into the van and have a sit down the problem after is getting out so here you go i'm in my van got my coffee excellent so i feel a bit of an idiot because i've just got into the van and noticed that i've leaned on this part of the door frame and it's split there there and also along here. I don't know if you can see that very well on the camera, but it's, it's, it's split there all the way to the rubber. So before the light fades, I thought I'd better do this little video about me. Um, some of you already know me if you're watching, if you're regular watchers, but you don't know about my background that much uh, because I don't know, it just didn't seem um any anything important really i mean the channel is about my van uh also about the transport related stuff that i am involved in so taking photographs in the main and being interested uh in buses and cars and so on so anyway um i was born uh in a county called warwickshire in the uk um to be more precise in Nuneaton, which is sort of halfway between Leicester and Birmingham. Uh, as you can see, I haven't got a Birmingham accent. Um, I don't think I've got a Birmingham accent, even if other people in the country think that people from Leicestershire have a Brummie accent. We haven't. Um, so I lived my sort of early childhood in a place called Hinkley, which is just next door to Nuneaton, sort of West Leicestershire, Warwickshire border sort of thing. And we moved to Leicester uh, when I was about eight. 
Um, my parents, well, my, my father, my dad, I should say. Father sounds a bit posh, doesn't it? My dad um, was from Leicestershire. He was born in Enderby. And uh, that's a sort of village south of Leicester. My mum was born in Colchester, but she lived most of her life in Leicester. She moved um, up here when she was about three or four years old. Um, she was the oldest of ten children. Her father was from Leicester. Her mother was from Colchester. Uh, on my dad's side, mainly um, my family was from places like sort of Shepshed, Haven, uh, Loughborough, um, Croft, uh, Peckleton. So it's all sort of southwest, north Leicestershire. Uh, anyway, I digress. So we moved to Leicester when I was very, very young. But I do remember my life in Hinkley. I really enjoyed um, uh, living there. Uh, I had a great childhood. Um, and that sort of kicked me off in getting interested in buses because we used to have a lot of BMO buses, uh, S21s, S23s, D9s, if you're into that sort of thing. Uh, so middle and red. Uh, we moved to Leicester. We settled, first of all, we lived with my mum's parents and then eventually moved to Braunston, uh, which is a suburb of Leicester, uh, not too far away from the M1 motorway. Um, when I first moved there, our local service was Midland Red, so I always had this love of Midland Red, and later went on to work for Midland Fox, which was a sort of successor of the company. Um, and I went to school in Braunston, and we had a nice view of the M1 across the fields, which is no longer the case, because there's loads of houses built there now. Uh, and then I uh, went to school in Desford, which is uh, sort of about five miles away from where I lived, out in the sticks. Um, after Desford, uh, I went on to, I did A-level art. That was one thing I did at Desford, which was useful, at Bosworth College, uh, as it was, the Bosworth Academy now. Then moved on to study graphic design at uh, Leicester School of Printing, which is Southfield College. Uh, that was a two-year course, and uh, at the end of that, my dad passed away. So that was quite a difficult time for me because uh, I was doing my. We did a show at, at the end of that course. I did I was doing the sort of diploma show, and um, he passed away just before I got my certificate, my BTEC. So that's a BTEC National Diploma in Graphic Design. Sounds very grand. Uh, I couldn't get on to university, I tried. Um, I ended up working for Midland Fox, as I said before. And uh, there I was uh, publicity assistant, marketing assistant, whichever you want to call it. And I stayed there for about five years. Um, being a bus enthusiast, um, obviously it was sort of a dream job. But in the end, it was sort of probably ruined with um, office politics, because I was based at head office, and... The fact that having a job in the bus industry and having an interest in the bus industry just don't go that well together. But I enjoyed going to rally visits with the company, helped out with the, the company stall. And in my late, later year, my last year, I uh, ended up um, organising the stall and then I left. Uh, I worked for um, a sort of, what do you call it, photocopy shop. But I was doing sort of design work and so on. So during this time, I met um, Madame Mega Bredvan. Uh, so that was 1996. She came to see me. She came to visit me from France. Uh, she's French, by the way, in case you don't know. If you watch the other videos, I'll like to mention it. Uh, and then sort of I moved here uh, after about a year or so. Uh, lots of going backwards and forwards on the Eurostar and so on um, and um, I've been living in France ever since I've been here for about 25 years now uh, as you've seen the video on the main channel we got married so we were together ooh, um, 26 years and finally got married so yeah and that brings us up to date after 300 meters at the roundabout take the first exit the round
roundabout, take the first exit. After 800 meters, turn left. I wanted to look at the, the bit I damaged because I took the van out this morning. Um, went for a little walk, so it's open up. And I told you that if I can just move the camera back, there we go. Just here, uh, it's split. It's split all the way to the seal. Um, just there. I've tried to bring you in for a closer look, see if you can see that. I can't really see it on my camera, but uh, I'm sure you can. Uh, it's sort of level with the, well, help I brought it down. It's level with the, the stop. So it's cracked all the way along, all the way to underneath the, the seal. So one of the jobs I have to go on with is, is doing that. The next job after that will be the um, glow plugs, because this morning it took me about five attempts to start the engine. Um, I, I'm suspecting it's a glow plug, so I'm not really sure what else it could be. be could be, sorry. Uh, and then after that, I don't know, but uh, I was thinking, oh, ooh, yeah, uh, tea cut. I'm going to tea cut this if the weather stays okay, uh, because uh, I'm not going to. I'm not planning on painting this part of the van. Uh, I don't see the point in painting it. It's all white, and I could probably put some vinyls on the side or something. But uh, anyway, the idea being that uh, at the top here you've got these ridges and as you can see I've already got some foliage up there and it sort of drips down and it streaks all the way down the van added to which not on this side but on the other side there's a load of scratches that were there when I bought the van so moving on to to make a bread van well the next sort of project really isn't going to be make a bread van itself but I need to tidy out our garage in short it'd be nice to, to have space to work on the van now the weather's turned a bit horrible, although it's lovely and sunny today. Um, you look out there, it's a bit bright. Can we see anything? There's a little bit of blue sky, but the camera is struggling. Um, yeah, so we've got that to do. Uh, so I'm going to make a start on that this afternoon. And uh, I've got my, oh, I've got my 50cc scooter in there that um, I'm probably going to end up selling. I'm going to end up selling that because... Uh, it's, uh, well, I'm not going to be getting on the scooter now, um, no. Well, we're back now, so I uh, hope you enjoyed the, the videos of the review of 2022. Um, I didn't think it was very coherent as I was editing it, so I might have had to put a lot of uh, captions in so you get an idea of what things are about, because it's not very easy to, to edit loads of bits of video from big bits of video that you've taken some months ago. Um, but anyway, you've got a general idea of what happened during the year, and uh, also the, the Mega Bread Van Notes videos at the end. So, with that, um, thanks for watching. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you in another video. Take care, bye. Support Mega Bread Van here. Yeah.